Bye. Well, hello everyone, Techsy88 here, and welcome to another review. And now we're taking a look at the Sinclair ZX Spectrum version of Bruce Lee. Released, um, released by Ocean Software in 1985. It's, well, it, it uses uh, the, um, the martial arts uh, superstar who, who revolutionized uh, the uh, interest in, in martial arts in general and changed the face of the action thriller forever in, with just a very small handful of films in the early 1970s before his tragic and unexpected death um, on 20th of July 1973 just um, just weeks before his his um, his famous film Enter the Dragon was due to get uh, release but enough about that we're on about the game and this is one in, in quite one thing that makes this game unique is that uh, it's one in which a second player can uh, can also to play the part of a, of an opponent to try and make it more difficult for the person who's playing as Bruce Lee. In this case, the opponent is known as the Green Yamo. But uh, and I'm wondering whether this could be the first uh, first game to have such a feature i don't know I, it it could certainly be among the among the first and so let's begin the game so there's there's our friend bruce, bruce in the top uh, and then he just and what i'm trying to do is is collect lanterns only in certain places do you have to collect absolutely every last lantern. There's the, that, that big guy with the big ears. That one I'm kicking right now is the green yamo, although obviously not green in this because of the spectrum of attribute limitations. God, God, could you imagine the colour clash? And as you saw, um, after, a while, after a brief period, after having been killed, he does come back after a while. So it's not like the uh, if a second player was controlling him, he, he wouldn't have anything to do for a while. You. Now, I'm not playing this seriously as this is a review, so... So the other, the other enemy in this game is this ninja here. armed with a Bokken. Well, it said Bokken, uh, it said Bokken in the documentation that I read, but uh, I, I'm wondering whether it actually is because I don't, I can't imagine a ninja holding a Bokken quite like that. In fact, it looks more like he's about to throw the javelin. So I've collected all the lanterns in these three rooms. So now that floor in the bottom middle of that panel is now open so I can go down there. A little bit of slowdown in this room. So another thing that's kind of... Another thing that's kind of... Uh, kind of a frustration is... Um, it, well, I wouldn't say it's a frustration, but it's a... It can seem a bit, um, bit odd for a game that's based on the, on possibly the uh, the most famous martial artist of the twentieth century, and he only has one. He only has two combat maneuvers: a flying kick and a punch. There is one way I don't have to collect all the lanterns. See, I didn't collect that one on the right. It's, Yeah, he... Oh, piss. I'm completing this time now. Man, never mind. As I said, I'm not playing this seriously. Yeah, then.
bit here. I can probably tell you don't really want to be touching those white things. Whatever they are. Goodness knows what these things are supposed to be. Need to collect both of those there, then the these start to go downwards. Yeah, one thing that, that is kind of annoying about this, uh, this game is it doesn't really have an awful lot to do with Bruce Lee. I completely mistimed that. Mid. So what? Well, I better be careful now. I've nearly lost all my lives. I'm on my last life now as it is. What's he doing? <laughs> Headbutting the wall. What do you think you are? Woodpecker or something? Yeah, so it doesn't really have an awful lot to do with uh, with Bruce Lee. Um, and the fact he's only got two f fighting moves, um, you can, can seem a bit disappointing. I mean, I, I could understand if people were, were expecting a bit more for a game based on Bruce. lanterns here. Now it's, now it's back here, back at the starting screens, but the difference is that again, not only is that um, that uh, statue now animated, but this wall on the right that was there is now open. Quite a lot of rooms in which uh, Bruce doesn't even get to, to do any chop socky, so to say that it's um, a game based on him is a. Uh... Oh, you dinkler! Let's try that again. Be a bit more careful this time. Green Yama just looks a bit funny when he sort of looks out of the screen just as he's falling. It, it, his facial expression does look a bit funny. Don't understand. You can actually you can actually use pretty much any key on the bottom of the keyboard to uh, as a fire button. The other you know, the other controls are the basic key AOP that you quite often forget. Yeah, a lot of two frame animation in this, but then it is a is a fairly early Spectrum title and. As I've said so many times, the Spectrum does have some attribute limitations and was never envisaged as a, a games machine by its creator, Sir Clive Sinclair, who lent his surname to the company that uh, first released the Spectrum back in the day. Sometimes you can coax the uh, the green yammer and the ninja into killing themselves on the different obstacles. Oh, 
goodness me, I nearly made that same mistake that I did uh, for the first time around. Oh, you dinkler! There is another problem that uh, quite a few people reported in the later uh, um, in in later uh, reviews of this game, and that does rather cause a pretty big problem. And something which even I found out uh, before um, before too long when I uh, when I first tried the game. The fact. That once you once you get the uh, get the hang of how everything works, the game is incredibly easy. There are some people who could get through the game eight, nine, even ten times without losing a life. That's how easy it is. I mean, I. Uh, yeah. You may have seen me making some uh, some pretty uh, silly mistakes during this review, but that's probably because I'm trying to uh, trying to critique it as well as play it, which is something I wouldn't normally be doing. I mean, it's playable enough. Uh, it's just it is. It's just is when you realise just how easy it actually is once you get to know how everything how everything works. Well, surely you might be thinking, well, every game's easy once you get here, once you get to know uh, know what's what and uh, where everything is and so forth. Not necessarily. There are some, uh, there are more than a few games out there which, uh, just because you know what to do, doesn't mean it's easy. Sadly, Bruce Lee isn't one of them. And back here again. The game is very minimalist, but uh, as I said, it is a fairly early uh, spectrum game. Yeah, the game does feel like a bit of a cash in on Bruce's name. In fact, YouTubers you Stats has actually um, uh, done some uh, some speed runs of this game, and 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 and, um, and managed to get through the whole of the game, from start to finish, in uh, in quite a quick time. Got I nearly managed to coax the green yamo into killing himself on that. Whatever that exploding thing is, I don't know whether it's a mine or something like that, but it could be. Yeah, see, there are quite a few screens where you're not actually doing any fighting, which sort of makes you wonder why they picked, why they picked Bruce Lee other than to cash in on his name. You can sod off as well. That's a funny way to climb up a spiral staircase, but I'm not going to be overly picky with it because it's quite an early 8-bit title. And... <laughs> See, sometimes they attack each other, and the idiots that they are. The 
the only real way you're going to get a legitimate challenge from this is if you have a second person playing as the green slash white Yamo. I believe, I believe he is green in the other versions where they don't have to worry about colour clash. screens in which the ninja and green yammer are up here. Go up! I've got to do this bit again. Another, another problem, even if, even if you do have someone playing as the green yammer, the problem is he's so slow that he's virtually, it's really hard to get any hits in on Bruce, so him and so he can't duck like that the way that Bruce can Being hand over hand so you, you could you could actually have literally any character fictitious or otherwise playing this this guy and it would still work. They didn't have to pick Bruce Lee, it could literally have been anyone. Here's the main boss. Just get that last lantern and he's dead. And that's it, I've just completed Bruce Lee, even though uh, that's only the second go I've had in quite some time. Like I said, it's really, really easy when you get there, when you know what's what. And to a certain extent, and then, it just, and then it's just a case of rinse and repeat. So, that's Bruce Lee for the Sinclair ZX Spectrum. There are quite a few people who would consider this game to be something of a classic, but... I don't really think it's all that aged all that well and the fact that it's so easy will will it will only be a matter of time before a lot of people get bored of it and will never play it again. I mean, it might have some nice uh, nice ideas which for the time are quite uh, interesting, um, such as the exploration aspect and the fact that you can have a, a human playing uh, the, me the the green yamo uh, and giving a bit of more of a legitimate challenge to the uh, the player playing as Lee Siulong, uh, Lee the Little Dragon, as he was sometimes affectionately known. But in all fairness. I'm not massively keen on this. Graphics are serviceable, nice, some nice use of colour with little in the way of attribute problems. I mean, you can see there's some a bit of bleed where the yellow of the lantern hits the white of the of the uh, the uh, hanging blades or whatever those are supposed to be. But it, it's not too uh, bad, really. And all, and the three main uh, uh, the three main characters in the game are all the same colour, so there's never any colour clash with those, even when, even when they're hitting each other. Animation's okay, but perhaps a bit simplistic even for its time, considering the way the exploding fist came out around the same sort of time. And look at the animation in that. And not not to mention, look how many more combat moves are in that compared to this. Sound. Well, it's serviceable. You get the footstep sound every time Bruce takes a step, and uh, you also get that did it did every time you lose a life. And uh, there's a little sound every time the uh, so one character strikes another.
gameplay. It's really quite simplistic. It really doesn't have a huge amount to do with Bruce Lee. As I said, you could literally place any character in this game and the whole premise would still work. Wouldn't even necessarily have to be a martial artist. Uh, the, the, the severe lack of combat moves, considering the game's based on one of the most famous martial artists of all time. Coupled with the fact that the game is really, really, really easy once you get the mechanics down pat. No, it really hasn't um, hasn't stood the test of time. So I'm going to give Bruce Lee for the ZX Spectrum 4 out of 10. It is fun for a little while, perhaps, but uh, its longevity due to the sheer ease in which it can be completed before too long is it does really count against it. And the fact that it's, uh, it's just really cashing in on Bruce Lee's name, even though the, that opening many screens shows that they did get permission from his wind widow, Linda. So, uh, it, yeah, this... I'm sorry, but for a game with Bruce Lee uh, connected to it, you do expect more. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that review. Catch you on another one soon. Taxi88 out.